Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy, where we take philosophy, mix it with beer, and apply it to the questions you deal with every day. Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy. <laughs> I'm Anastasia here with Mike and John, and this week we are discussing Puerto Rican statehood. Well, yeah, kind of. Well, yeah. We're talking about the Puerto colonization of, of, of Puerto Rico. Yeah, yeah. Cool. That'll be interesting. But before we get started, what are we drinking, guys? We are drinking Pumpkin L. From the Dogfish Head Brewery in Milton, Delaware. And what's the ABV on this, John? Uh, 7%. 7%. Almost enough. You know, these, uh, these Dogfish Head beers are always so, so good. So I'm kind of looking forward to this one. So we're going to talk a little bit about... Puerto Rico, largely because uh, if you've been following the news, the uh, the Assembly of Puerto Rico had held a referendum here recently. As they do from time uh, to time. They, 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 they've held uh, five big ones, uh, and and the first three, the, uh, the question of statehood failed miserably. Right. In 2012 was the first time that, that the, the Territory of Puerto Rico voted to be uh, to be state, but it was very narrow. In this last last referendum they had, uh, and it depends on what number you see. There, there, there's there's a number of 93 percent, a number of 97 percent, and I, it comes down to how they count the absentee votes that were that, that were in right. there. Right. So, but but an overwhelming number of people voted for statehood. Uh, now that having been said, something weird happened in in, in Puerto Rico where the uh, there, there there's three basic camps there. There's the, the camp that's that's pro-statehood. Mm-hmm. There's the camp that says we should stay a commonwealth like they are now, a territory. Mm-hmm. And then there's the we should be an independent country camp. Right. The independents uh, had a massive movement to boycott the election. So only 23% of, of, of eligible voters voted in this last election. So, right. you know, you get 93 to 97% support of 23% of the people. Yeah. You know? So uh, and that's the fucking risky run. I guess the point there being that the referendum doesn't actually, isn't actually binding, though. Uh, that, that's the situation. All we'll, we'll get into that in some detail as we go, but, but Puerto Rico's in this weird state where it's a territory. They get to make their own uh, territorial laws, and they have a legislature for it. But all the referendum was, was do you want to do this? It's yeah. now going to take a... a, 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 a Decision by a joint session of Congress and then approval by the president for it to it to go through, which uh, uh, we will talk about it. But I don't suspect we're going to see any action on that. So two things I, I, I kind of want to dive into, unless you haven't planned later on uh, real early is one. What is the normal turnout on these referendums? They actually Puerto Rico has a has, has a very high uh, voter turnout compared to, to, to most states. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they they have a. a, a I think part of it is that their tradition of voting is not as long as others, and we see this in a lot of parts of the world. Now, it's still fairly long. They've been, they've been voting since the 1940s like mm-hmm. this, but new democracies tend to have a much higher uh, voter turnout than older democracies do. Um, and I, th- I think that's... Because th- there's that still may, a novelty to it. It's still a novelty to it, and, and there, there, there's, there, there's more to it. There, there, your votes are, are, have more gravitas to it, I think. Um, so I, I don't know what the percentage was. I read somewhere that it was that they usually have a higher voter turnout than, than states do, uh, which you know. Yeah, but but then my question is, if they had a twenty five percent voter turnout, but normally it's forty, that's still not. It's still a pretty pretty low turnout. But it, uh, it's it, a yeah, low turnout. It, but you, know, it, you can't anyway. you cannot consider the non voters a success because they weren't able. Yeah, that's, if, that's, that's you, true. You see what I'm saying? Well, uh, here here's the reasoning behind it, and uh, the the the. Uh, Independent people wanted to send a message when they when they boycotted this, and and this was interesting to me and a risk that you take whenever you do this. The message yeah. they were trying to send was was that it's an illegitimate government anyway. We shouldn't be participating, and right. we should be a, a, we should be our own system. Well, and you well, also have this ability to make it seem like your voice is much bigger than it is when you refuse to participate. That's true. Um, because there were a lot of people who weren't going to vote anyway, who now, to some degree at least, de facto get lumped in with the independent, That's right. uh, That's independent right. uh, state people. And so it seems like that is a much bigger force yeah, than it yeah. maybe actually is. Yeah, I mean, if you ever wanted to instill a dictator in the U.S., all you'd have to do is change the voting. So you no longer vote people into office. You just vote the last one out. and He would yeah. never get overturned. Yeah, yeah I mean, the real reason that libertarians don't win is because, like, 
we actually are the majority of people in the United States. Just a lot of us don't just, vote. We don't vote. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. that's what it is. Yeah, I, y'all just don't know. Yeah, but uh, but okay. So so that was my first thing, uh, and and we don't have numbers for it, but but it, it's clearly significant. Yeah. yeah. My second thing was I want to go through kind of the the advocation or maybe psychology is a better word for each of these three groups because because I kind of yeah. get two of them but one of them I'm just lost let's on. let's do that but let's look at some history on it first okay and see how we got where we are because right. it's it, to me it, it is it peculiar helps us Puerto Rico is a is a strange place it was uh, uh you know Puerto Rico was settled way back in 1493 by the Spanish it was conquered in 1493 by Christopher just Columbus. a year after Christopher yeah, Columbus and, and, discovered and, the, the and, and, and North, North America, America. Uh, and, and <laughs> I thought he invented it yes. oh right yes yeah, sorry no, no that was Ben Franklin invented ben, okay. electricity yeah okay uh, which was, was based yeah it was one year after <laughs> uh, after Columbus's first voyage. it was on his second voyage uh, where he claims this um, and it pretty much spent the next 400 years as a Spanish Spanish controlled province. Mm-hmm. Uh, Spain uh, Spain changed the whole outlook of it. They introduced sugar to it. They uh, uh, they they also introduced African slavery into there and changed the the, the ethnicity of the people that were there. Mm-hmm. Everything changed because of the Spanish. Uh, well, you go go forward four hundred years or so. You know, uh, five almost five hundred years. Well, no, right at four hundred. You get down to eighteen ninety eight. Okay, mm-hmm. Spanish American Wars kicked off uh, uh, and. America was coming to the forefront as a world power in 1898. Most people pick 1898 as the year where America stopped being a third world agrarian experiment and became a world power. Okay? That's a big shift. It was. And, and, and it's because we took on one of those old world powers. We took on Spain. Now, this was an interesting war because it was fought, uh, at least on paper, this war was fought to free the people of Cuba from uh, Spanish atrocities because they had colonized it. In reality, we wanted the sugar in Cuba. Yeah. Um, we, we fought this war. We, we very eff- effectively, d- just in four months, destroyed the Spanish Empire, uh, one of the biggest victories in, in, in history. Now, the Filipino insurrection goes on for years over there, but the, the, the main part of the Spanish-American War is, is over with in, in about four months. At the end of the war... Uh, the United States ends up getting control of, of Guam, the Philippines, uh, Puerto Rico, and Cuba. Um, those were our, our spoils of war. The one we're going to deal with there is, uh, in this for the most part, is, is Puerto Rico, although I'd like to at some point talk about the rest of those as well. So America is basically taken over, and we don't want to use that dirty word colony, Okay. We're not colonizing because that's, that's bad stuff. We fought a war against colonization. But, in fact, what we did is we went into Puerto Rico. We established a, a, a new government. We put it as a protectorate uh, of, of the United States. We appointed who the governor was. We didn't let, let, let them elect their leaders. It had a military governor for a while. Um, and we established them as de facto uh, property of the United States. That was kind of the last of the Manifest Destiny movement. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's kind of been sitting there in this weird limbo place for, for quite a long time now. Uh, they, are, they are citizens of the United States. Uh, it, it, it ends up becoming a citizen... Excuse me, I can't speak very well today. Uh, after 1900, when we passed the Foraker Act, two years after getting it, we passed this Foraker Act, where... Uh, we went through and, and we established this, this, this civilian government for Puerto Rico. Uh, we made all our federal laws applicable on the island. And Puerto Rico was given a non-binding, non-voting member of Congress. So suddenly they could elect their own legislature. They could make their own laws. But, and, and, and they got to send a delegate to our Congress, but they, he was a non-voting member. This is kind of when we when we moved into the territorial area. We're going to pretend they matter too. Yeah, uh, and it, it 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 stays there until 1948, where it officially became a commonwealth. Can can I chase a yeah, rabbit real yeah, quick? Yep. Yeah. Uh, and I, I I guess I'm asking currently because I'm I'm sure it's shifted over the years. Do they tend to lean more Democratic or Republican? Uh, they tend to lean more le- lean. Uh, I can't speak. They tend to lean more Democratic. Okay. Uh, uh, and they haven't always. Uh, part of that is the fact that it was it was a uh, it was a Republican uh, body that that conquered them. It was William mm. McKinley, and that's going to be part of the reason why that that happened. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so let's talk about what what the effects are of this, because 
What we've done in Puerto Rico is interesting. Uh, if you talk to Puerto Ricans, they're that they, they are they are both very proud of being Puerto Ricans and many times very very proud Americans as well. Uh, they are second only to Texas in the number, of, percentage-wise, of the number of people that join the U.S. military. I was actually about to make that point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they're, 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 they massively join the military. Uh, I served with so many of these guys when I was when I was in. Do you know that like half of all the military comes from Texas? <laughs> Sorry, Rachel. Told- no. There, there was a yeah. friend of hers who, who insisted that was a fact, and uh, it, it, it's pretty big. It's not half, but it's, yeah. it's pretty large. No, he, yeah. he insisted Texas could leave the union because half the military is from Texas anyway. So they would all clearly. Yeah, no, that's not how it works. Uh, so shocker, we went through. We made these. We actually made Puerto Ricans uh, citizens in 1917 with the Jones Act. I found it interesting. They did a series of questions, and they, uh, I found this on a uh, on a, one of the Vox pages. I don't remember which one it was. But uh, in this, these questions, they said that only 43% of Americans recognize that Puerto Ricans are citizens. Most Americans believe that Puerto Rico is not part of the United States. That's not surprising at all, unfortunately. I actually had a question along that line. Yep. Um, for them, are they able to travel to the continental U.S. without a passport? Yeah, yeah they are. Okay, uh, that I wasn't sure yes, about. Yes, they are. Just because... Here's the interesting thing about being a Puerto Rican. You are a natural-born citizen. But if you live in Puerto Rico, you're a natural-born citizen that gets to vote in the primary. So you get to help pick the, the delegates. You get to vote in the Republican primary, the Democratic primary, mm-hmm. pick the delegates. But you don't get to vote in the general election for president. You, uh, you, you have no vote for that. But that same person, natural-born citizen, moves to New York, let's say, and lives there. Now that person can vote for the president. The only thing that changed was where they lived. That is dumb. Well, Isn't so, that interesting, though? And, and you know, he, here's another uh, another thing. I, I, I think there there's kind of this weird gray zone. Uh, there's actually two zones, I think, where people would answer the question correctly, are Puerto Rican citizens? Because I think if you asked... I think most people... I think most people realize Puerto Rico is part of the U.S. I do believe that. Now, if you asked me... I've heard many times that Puerto Ricans are citizens. I know some colonies aren't, and some are, uh, and I am using the word colony. Yeah, yeah. But some are, and some aren't. If you asked me as a Puerto Rican a citizen, I would absolutely realize they're part of the U.S. But I don't think on an average day I would tell you yes they are because I'd be like, is that one of the ones that has citizenship? Yeah, because yeah, I think American Samoans are not citizens. If no, I they're remember not. correct. Yeah, yeah. So I think there's a gray zone. But they can serve in the military where people yes. are smart enough to realize that. Puerto Rico's part of the U.S., but don't realize that not everybody who is part of the U.S. is a citizen yeah. who would all answer yes. Yeah, uh, what Puerto Rico technically is called is an unincorporated territory or commonwealth, which yeah. is ridiculous to call yeah. it an unincorporated territory. Mm-hmm. That was a title we gave it way back in 1900. Yeah, I think I think there's a zone above that where they're smart enough to know that, that Puerto Rico is part of the U.S., but also <laughs> realize that not everybody in the U.S. is a citizen and, and have to make that evaluation. And then there's another zone where they're just they intelligent just enough to things. know all the things. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And so I wonder on that 43%, how much of that is people not actually realizing it's part of the U.S., and how much of that is people parsing the word citizen? Yeah, I, I, you, you I, know I wonder what I'm about it. I, I have known a lot of people that have thought that Puerto Rico was a separate country in my life. Uh, okay. You know, so... Um, uh, and, and there's some interesting interesting aspects of that. You're talking about, um, you know, when you talk about nationality, you talk about a lot of things. Uh-huh. And I would argue that if you're arguing Puerto Rican nationality, it depends on whether you're arguing from a government perspective or an economic and sociological perspective. Uh-huh. Because in government, we say that nationality is, you know, do you are, are you under the control of this national government? But... When you get into sociology, nationality involves your cult, your your religion, your mm-hmm. language, your culture, uh, and and Puerto Rico is vastly different than the rest of the United States. Yeah, uh, and it's part of the reason why they're not a fifty for the fifty first state yet. There's a lot of reasons for this, but it would be uh, it would be the first you know were Puerto Rico to become the fifty first state, it would be the only state in the United States that uh, is that speaks a majority. Uh, Foreign Not language. Yeah. They speak Spanish. Uh, the vast majority. While it's officially bilingual, um, see if I can find this number on here. I wrote it down somewhere, but there's no telling where I put it. Um, 
Um, I don't see it on here, but uh, 80% officially b- bilingual, 80% of Puerto Ricans do not speak English uh, hmm. fluently. So that, you know, that, that creates a, an issue. It's also a, a, a <coughs> nation that is overwhelmingly Catholic. Right. Now, mm-hmm. today we, we, we go, so what? But think about most of history. Catholic was considered to be a foreign, uh, oh, yeah. a, a foreign religion in the United States. That's been part of, part of the problem that's there. Uh, you know, their language is different. Everything is quite a bit different about this place. So the problems that you run into with assimilation into your, in, into your culture are, are vast. Uh, but, you know, what, 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 what exactly have, how have we used Puerto Rico? Anybody got any ideas what, what the U.S. has used Puerto Rico for over the years? Sugar. We 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 have we have by far taken the sugar, uh, uh, but it's also tourism. Uh, lots of tourism, but it's the leading testing ground that we have, that the United States has used for the military for years. Mm. We, oh. we we have dropped bombs all over that island for a hundred years now. Over hundred years. I did years. not know that. Yeah, that's a it's, it's a major testing ground. I did some uh, some training in Puerto Rico back in ninety one, ninety two, somewhere in there. And, uh, you know, we, we just, this pristine beach, and we bombed the shit out of it there. Uh, Puerto Rico would love us to stop doing that. So glass manufacturing. Really? Yeah. So Damn, it's, John. Uh, <laughs> it was also the place where, um, where the U.S. government first tested the birth control pill. We tested it in Puerto Rico before we tested it anywhere else. Of course we did. Um, that's, that's just, you, you know, you start seeing these things. We have treated it as... Uh, you know, as a, a, a defeated nation for, for lots of times, or lots of our history. So why, why not? What do you think? Why, what's the arguments against? Well, well, let's start with four. What's the arguments for uh, statehood? So, so, so I got to ask before I, I go into this, the arguments from a Puerto Rican or the arguments from a continental U.S.? I, let's, let's just go both. Let's just, what are the arguments that people would have for giving statehood to Puerto Rico. Morality arguments, I think. I think morality is the strongest one. Um, yeah, I, I mean, they're subject to most of our federal taxes. Uh, everything but income tax. Right. By the um, way, they, uh, that's one of the things that, that, that particularly the right talks about a lot is that uh, um, if we were to take them, we would, uh, you know, we, we would lose all this money and all this. But uh, while they don't pay income tax, they have, a, uh, they have the highest estate tax in the United States, mm-hmm. and and there's no cutoff. You know, uh, th- th- there's there's a there's a massive cutoff where I've forgotten how much it is. So many millions of dollars you can you can you can write off in the, in the United States. They tax the estate all the way down to zero dollars. So when you when you die, you, the, you know it's like twenty eight percent comes off immediately. Wow. Uh, so there, it, it, we more than make up for the fact that we don't get an income tax. Right. Um, but yeah, so they're subject to federal taxes. They're subject to federal laws. Um, and I, I mean, I really do think that it is, it is a morality argument that, um, you know, we have been treating them in so many ways like second class citizens. Um, you know, they have this ability, they, they can be drafted and, and don't give me, I'm not saying either of you guys are, but in the comments, don't give me the reaction that, oh, well, we haven't had a draft in so many years. It still exists and it can still happen. And they can be drafted. And if uh, if they can be drafted, they should also have the full rights of citizens. I mean, I mean, if we're going to talk about the draft, let, let's talk about it honestly. Uh, what if there was a government program where at the whim of Congress, they could start rolling dice or drawing lots and we kill off people for population control and you were subject to being killed off i don't think if anyone if we had that program anyone would be like but they're not drawing lots right now yeah but if we really look at it that's largely what it is and by the the it, and, and it, maybe the reasoning is different but even by the admission of the policies itself whenever they have um policies that say you can't take the only male child of a family that's because they will die yeah you don't draft yeah. people when the war is going well yep yeah that, that that's the argument for not drafting women because women host babies yep yeah. That's at least one of the arguments, yeah. One of yeah, them. Yeah, yeah one Although of them. The other one is that if there are women on the battlefield, men will want to bang more than they want to 
bang bang. I think that's the better <laughs> argument. Of course, of course, in Rome, they you know they bang banged each other. Yeah, oh, wait, so. banged each other. They bang. Well, they also bang banged each other. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, well, no, have, they didn't, they didn't have, have guns. bang bangs yet. They stab stabbed each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, so think clanked is the word. The, the, these these moral issues. Are there other other reasons why Puerto Rico <clears throat> should be a state? I think economic reasons. So so you mentioned the income tax. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, uh, I, I think most of the economic issues are going to fall the other way for it. So we, 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 we can look at it. Maybe they'd have to start paying income tax. But, but if they take, pay the income tax, are we going to change the estate tax and put them under the federal? So I, I, don't, I don't think it's possible to argue that there is – yeah, it's, it's not economically possible. It is not possible to argue that there is a system in which having more people in a society – because that's really what we're talking about yep. is incorporating these people in our society would mean that the uh, you, there would be less money. Because that would mean, now, I'm going to say something crazy here. What? That would mean the government was running a deficit on each one of its citizens <laughs> and that it couldn't actually afford the programs yep. it has. Wait a minute, but... That uh, would be irresponsible. Yeah, and yeah, I yeah, don't deficits. think... Yeah. Our government, government would, would do that. never be that no, irresponsible. They, they wouldn't. Yeah. They wouldn't. Oh, you know, we talk about economic uh. issues, and uh, you know, at one point Puerto Rico was an economic boom to the United States. In the 1940s, uh, Harry Truman, uh, after he comes in, comes into office, and Harry Truman. I love Harry Truman for a lot of reasons. He's the guy that desegregated the military. He said it's not right to treat people this way. He also uh, ordered that that Puerto Rico be given. Uh, it's called Operation Bootstrap. He moved to industrialize Puerto Rico, and he, he cut tax rates on them. Uh, he allowed labor to, to operate much cheaper. He took, he took the labor restrictions off so they could, they could get cheap labor. And Puerto Rico kind of redefined itself in the 1940s and became a leading producer at the time of, of technology that we had and pharmaceuticals. Still today, it's a major producer of pharmaceuticals. Mm -hmm. That's their big industry today. Uh, so we know that, 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 that you can do this. Now, in 2007, uh, the, uh, the U.S., I'm sorry, 2006, uh, most of these programs were ended by Congress. And we have seen, if you can look at a, at, a, at a line graph of it, and in 2006, the economy just collapsed in Puerto mm -hmm. Rico because they took these economic benefits away. Um, now, you can talk about you know, the, the, your, your, the, the open hand or, or, or invisible hand and all this, but when they pulled those... The open hand the is open something hands, different. They slap them. <laughs> uh, the that's open. what they did in 2007. <laughs> the seven. open hand of the they, government. They, that's they, it. They used the open hand. They, they used the closed fist. Of <laughs> uh, but they, they took okay. away those, 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 uh, those abilities, and Puerto Rico all of a sudden started getting taxed. And, mm -hmm. uh, and for, you know, we, we have an import tax on Puerto Rico now. They're in the United States, and we have an import. Mm. Puerto Rico is in the United States. That and, was one of the reasons and, and, I wondered about the passport yeah, thing. They're in the United States, and the tax rate to bring something from Puerto Rico is higher than the tax rate to bring it from Canada or Mexico because of NAFTA. But you know why that is. They're taking all our manufacturing jobs out of the U.S., no, I, I think what that I think what that is is because they don't get to vote for the president. Um, oh, oh, right, so, yeah, right. I think but neither the, do Canadians. Neither of the presidential that, candidates that, that, gave a true. shit. Uh, um, we have had presidents that did. Uh, Jimmy that Carter. Oh, okay. Jimmy Carter made a really big attempt to, to treat Puerto Rico well, uh, but he, did, he, he didn't have control of. He, he didn't have any were near the votes to get things done. That is a shame. Um, you know, but uh, you know, in that regard, Harry Truman did a lot for him. Jimmy Carter. I think that's what Trump's to. dealing with now. Trump's dealing with a lot of stuff right now. <laughs> um, so, yeah, he doesn't have control of the House and the Senate no, right now. No, no, no. no. Right. It, it, that's, that's exactly what the problem is. He didn't oh. have control of the White House. Let's be honest. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> he, okay, let's get got, back on he's track. He's got the House, the Senate, the Supreme Court. I don't understand. And yet. This is not a show about Trump right now. And he can't well, get Kavanaugh. Uh, never, never mind. Um, so. I heard that I read this yep. morning. That's that's prob that, that's yeah. a done deal, basically. Yeah. By one vote. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Which is which is astonishing. That's another show, but yeah. that is astonishing. It's not astonishing these days, but it is another show. So let's get back yeah. to Puerto Rico. So, you know, you're you're looking at at at, at what's going on with the, with this uh, this territory, and I tell you what, let's talk about the beer, and then I want to get into the naked get into the reasons not to vote for it. I heard naked something. The get into the naked what? I don't know. Let's okay. get into. Let's talk it about. Cost five hundred dollars. Yes, five hundred dollars right. to get naked with me. I didn't realize it was a naked nap. I'm sorry. That's seven hundred and fifty dollars if you want to get <laughs> naked with me. Um, 
I don't know. How do I have sex with it? It doesn't matter, Mike. Okay. I'm going to tell you, Mike. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm, I, I got to let you, let you in on this. I know we're tasting rabbits right, right now. So let's let's talk about this beer, and then we'll get into the, the, the reasons why Puerto Rico might not be a great choice. Okay. All right. Uh, who'd like to start this one? I, uh, I, I do. Okay. So everyone who's listened to the show for any amount of time knows that I'm a big fan of Dogfish Head. I also... That's $500, baby. No, that's what you want to do to Dogfish Head. For $500? <laughs> um, but no, I'm a, big, I'm a big fan of Dogfish Head. Um, and I also have a terrible time rating their beers. Yeah. Because they openly admit... and they this, break the mold. This weighs into me. They openly admit, we're not playing to the style. That's right. I mean, This is literally part of their off-centered art series. Yeah. Which is partially about the uh, um, label. Yeah. But, I mean, that, that's been kind of a... a kick of theirs for a while yeah and they list this as a brown ale brewed with pumpkin and spices and yeah i, I can see it's a brown ale but i tend to like veer off this the categories with this one so with that said um i'm i want to say i'm surprised and in a way i'm not i'm surprised that i have a pumpkin ale that i like this much but i'm not surprised that dogfish had made a pumpkin ale I like this much. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, They're really good at going off the beaten path. Yeah, they are. This this is this is a great pumpkin ale. Uh, all that said, it's still a pumpkin ale. It's not going to hit, you know, a four for me by any means. It's, it's a pumpkin ale. Uh, it tastes that way, but uh, they did a really great job balancing the sweets, and you have to have sweet with your pumpkin, balancing the spices, not making it like a candy punch type thing, yep. keeping yeah, it a beer. It's not a cider. It's a beer. But there's definite pumpkin and spice in there. Uh, all that said, um, I'm going to go 3-2. Really? Really? 3-2? Go ahead, yeah. Mike. Me? Um, Please go. I, I was not excited about drinking this beer because I don't like pumpkin. So I just, I, I whenever you, you heard me, I went, really? We're drinking this? Okay, this is going to be great. But uh, but it's, it's done well, I think. Mm-hmm. I think for a pumpkin beer, it's done well. I, and, yeah. and the pumpkin is not, uh, the pumpkin, as it said, is not. Oh, it um, does say pumpkin. It says pumpkin. It's not uh, overwhelming. It's an aftertaste in there, uh, and a smell. Uh, there, 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 it smells good. I can't smell anything, so I don't. I, I, I'm probably missing. You're missing out. On out. Part of that. You are. Um, I, I think it's. I think it's. It's done well for what it is. This is not going to be my choice of beer. I'm. Not, I probably wouldn't buy this beer again, personally, just because it's. It's just. It's not what I like in a beer. I don't like a real spicy beer like that, and I, mm. all, all those spices in there. It's. It. It tastes like a holiday to me. Okay. And I think, you know, if... Uh, like maybe Halloween? I think this would be great at Halloween or Thanksgiving even. You know, I think it'd be, it, 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 it would be awesome at that time period, which is cool. Yeah. Uh, but I'm, it's, not, it's just not my choice of a beer. I, I'm in a weird place here where I've, I wouldn't buy this again, mm-hmm. but I think they did a very good job on what they did. Right. And uh, I'm, I'm going to... That puts me in a hard spot, so I'm just going to put it right at the benchmark. I'm going to say 2.5. Interesting. Okay. So I'm going to start out saying I'm going to give it a 2.6. Um, I think the pumpkin part of it is good. Um, the beer is not my favorite, though. Um, the smell on the pumpkin is fantastic. It is not overwhelming to the senses whenever you're drinking it. Um, it's a pleasant accent, but it's a pleasant accent on top of a not fantastic beer. It's a pleasant accent on top of a fine beer. Um, it's uh, the beer. Otherwise I think is fairly plain, um, spiced a little bit. Um, for a brown ale, I would have expected it to have a little bit fuller mouthfeel than it does. It feels a little light to me. Um, but I have enjoyed it and that's why I give it a 2.6. You want to know the beer advocate rating? I'm it's guess. over a three because everything go on three Beer eight. Advocate is over a three. I'm going to say three eight. Three point nine. Hey, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. In fact, every time we've been checking them, it has not been less than a three point eight. Yeah. I, here's my my thing about Beer Advocate is I honestly and I, I I I'm probably opening my mouth up and shouldn't say something here, but I think what happens with Beer Advocate is the the brewers of the company go in and they 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 adjust the. I actually think it's something else. I I don't I don't believe it's that. I, I don't believe Dogfish Head or any of these small breweries are big enough to do that. Here's what I think it is. I think people who like pumpkin ales... Coors buy... Light gets a two on Beer Advocate. What does? Coors Light. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. But I, I think people that like Fuck pumpkin them. ale buy it, and they go and rate it. And people who don't 
like pumpkin ale, don't, don't buy it. Don't bother. So you don't get those ratings. Or I think even if they do, they just don't bother going in rating because why, why take the time? Yeah. You you rate what you like. Yeah, I think so. I, I, I've i done that. I do that Bud with Light apps. gets a 1.86. That's too high. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, so... So I think with that, because I don't think that Bud Light or Coors Light would have made it onto our scale. And <laughs> Coors Light might have made it onto my scale. Oh, I'm God just saying. Damn it, Mike. Really? <laughs> Four years in and you tell us this? Yeah, I, don't, I don't think it would have been high. I mean, but All right, it, we need to have a meeting immediately. We That's, do. We're going to pause the show, guys. guys show's I'm over. To, I'm about to be um, fired. Yes. Oh. Take it back. I will beat it out of you. Uh, let's play our game. Okay. Um, Sorry, I am so distracted. So, uh, will it get you laid? Um, I actually don't think that it will. I'm with you. Um, because... Unless you want to fuck a pumpkin. <laughs> not even then. That's kind of cannibalistic, For real. Isn't it? Not even then. But, like, this isn't going to please your basic bitch. She needs a pumpkin cider. Um, sorry, a pumpkin spice cider. Latte. Whatever. Pumpkin spice latte. Not the point. <laughs> I'm saying if you're going to ply her with alcohol, it needs to be sweeter than this. Um, I don't think it is crafty enough to Public service impress. announcement, do not ply them with alcohol to get laid. Go ahead. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> don't do that. Uh, ply them with alcohol, but not to get laid. <laughs> That's just a byproduct. It's a byproduct. It doesn't have to be. Uh, but anyway, um, so yeah, it, it's not going to please your basic bitch. Um, it is not going to wow your beer aficionado. And I think for anybody in between there, there are three dozen other beers that will be more impressive than this one. I think 36 beers in case you're wondering. I think you're crazy on this one. (laughs) You are crazy. And not because the beer is so excellent. Because I can walk to the right part of Tyler, throw a pumpkin down the street and get my dick sucked. I'm just saying. (laughs) And you're telling me this, I got to get you laid. Right. Uh, Whatever. Uh, There's way more pumpkin in a pumpkin than this beer. Uh, yeah, uh, come yeah. on. I guess. I guess. All right, John. Okay. So on, on the date, um, I'm going to put this. It's it's not your hail mary. It's not your first date. Uh, it's a switch it up beer. It's your, I, I'm I'm with somebody. I'm feeling a little stable. I want to try something new. Go grab this. It's your Halloween party date. Is what it is. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, and that's when you're going to get it, what, what season it's in. But th- this is, you know, something you do to try something new. This is not be a staple in, in, in your dating game. So, I mean, I'll agree with you on that. Yeah. Uh, um, I, I'm going to go with this is not a lawnmower beer uh, b- because there's not enough alcohol in it to make me mow my lawn in October. So uh, <laughs> I'm just going to say say no, it's it's not a lawnmower beer. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's not, a, it's not a bad beer, right? I think if you are a pumpkin person, you'll really enjoy it. Um, if you're like me and not a pumpkin person, that it's was just a good burp, good. though. I just burped, and that pumpkin was good. That was good. That was much better the second time. I am so glad that you're t- telling us about your burps now. <laughs> hey, that is a valid part of beer evaluation. It, it, it is. It is. All right. So the the question is why why would we not make Puerto Rico a statehood? Because I think. Uh, I'm going to go on the record right here and say that I, I don't believe that, that Congress is even going to uh, uh, address this. I think you know, you're going to have your, your Puerto Rican representative come and, and make his plea, and then it's going to be tabled. I don't think it's ever going to come up for a vote, uh, not, with, not with the current Congress we have, <laughs> no. um, uh, for, for a lot of reasons. Uh, probably the biggest reason is – and the biggest reason why it's, it's failed over the years is because of uh, – uh, political reasons is it would change the it would change the dynamic of the Senate a little bit. Uh, they become a statehood, they're going to end up getting themselves two senators. Uh, they're going to end up getting themselves five House seats, and they're all going to be Democrat more than likely. Yeah. A Republican Congress is not going to vote that in. Oh hell no. So well, let me ask you this: If the Republican Congress went ahead and pushed as a Republican issue, do those seats switch? Any of them? You know, I I wonder about that because. You know, uh, Cuba, uh, Cuban Americans are the one Latino group that votes fairly uh, uh, Republican. Fairly Republican, and part of the reason why is because it's been the it's been the Republican Party that's done the most for Cuban refugees. It hasn't been the Democratic Party. What? Uh, so, so, so it's pop- okay. John F. Kennedy tried to kill Castro at, a t- at, at the wrong time period. So. Um, <laughs> Uh, I, so, I wasn't actually disbelief, yeah. so, uh, uh, disbelieving you, of that. You, you look at that and you, and, and you wonder about that. Uh, but uh, 
I don't know. I, I don't. I don't think you can overcome the. I don't think. I don't think one vote overcomes the years of abuse. The fact that the Republican Congress is the one that 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 canceled all the uh, economic advantages that, that they were having. Yeah. You know, uh, that they've kind of been shit on by by the Congress in the years that that the Republicans have been in charge of it. Um, which 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 makes me wonder about it. Uh, all right. So, reasons not to uh, to. to to uh, to add add Puerto Rico in as a state, We've because we're in deficit and we can't afford to redesign the flag. Uh, I, I I've, I've said I for think years, that's a reason to admit them. We have had the same flag for so long. We've had the same but, flag since 1948. Yeah, 1948 when Hawaii came in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. on my birthday. Really? Yeah. That's the only reason you, you were know born in 1948. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> I knew you, you were. You look good, Shut baby. Up. You look hot. No, I actually did a book report on Hawaii. When I happened to find that did out. Did you just read one book? No. Okay. Then it wasn't a book report. I read the it was wiki. a research paper. Sorry. Yeah, okay. you're right. All right. So. I did a books report. Uh, <laughs> currently, currently, Puerto Rico collects $23.5 billion a year in federal aid. $23.5 billion a year in federal aid. Um, Puerto Rico has got. Almost as much as all the college students. Uh, Puerto Rico, but, but but a lot smaller number. There's there's about 3.1 yes. million people in Puerto Rico, which by the way, uh, would not would make it a good sized state. It would make right. it bigger than a lot of our states. Um, it it also has uh, it's also about 73 billion dollars in debt right now. And one of the one of the, the the things that happens whenever you go through the process of becoming a state is that. You're, at least traditionally, what has always happened is that the federal government takes over the debt. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't be carried by Puerto Rico anymore. It would then be, be spread out among... So we add three quarters of a, tr a trillion onto our, what, 21 trillion but, now? But, but, uh, yeah, but, but it, it's still a real number. It's, it is a real number. It's still a real like, number. Like, no doubt. Let, let me ask you a question. Yeah. You even said in the show that a lot of their economic troubles have to do with their status. Oh, absolutely. So would making them a state fix their economic troubles and then make them less welfare dependent? Well, it, it, I think it might. I think it might. And that's the argument that, that people give out there. Uh, but the other issue is is they look at the, at the gross domestic product of, of Puerto Rico. Uh, Puerto Rico's GDP is, uh, it, it is about $28,529, mm -hmm. uh, which is the... Uh, it's comparable to Mississippi, who is our lowest GDP in the United States. Right. Okay. It would replace Mississippi as the lowest GDP. Mm -hmm. uh, Mississippi is at 32,421. So, Was that the case before we took away all their pharmaceutical production? Uh, it, it, yes, it's been the lowest, but it's gotten lower. Uh, it, okay. it was a lot more comparable to Mississippi. Okay. But the question is, do in, in, in times of, of economic uncertainty, do you add something in? I, and I think it's a legitimate argument. Yeah. Whether I agree with it or not, I think it's I think it's a an argument that that has has merit. I think it is. Um, I, I liken this a lot to my argument on the draft. I think we should get rid of the draft. Yeah. Um, but if we're not going to get rid of the draft, I think that women should be eligible for it too. Everybody should. Exactly. Um, and so my thing with Puerto Rican statehood is make them a state or let them the fuck go. Um, well, it, that, but again, that's that this... morality argument, that moral argument. Yeah. And I, I think I think you you make a good argument there. But but if we're looking at just, we're in limbo right now. We're just looking at, at at raw statistical numbers here and saying, would it be a smart thing to do? Yeah. Now, you're just, honestly let let let's just, let, let's take the morality out, which I know is hard to do because I think we're all in the same place there. But let's just look at things from a statistical point of view. Mm -hmm. You are a X's and O's, ones and zeros guy, mm -hmm. and you look at this, and they say. We want to add Puerto Rico as a state. Puerto Rico currently uh, is $73 billion in debt. Cur it, it, it's got 11.5% uh, unemployment, twice the unemployment rate of the United States. Uh -huh. uh, does it make sense to do it? So, so and, and, and this actually gets into the root of my question I was asking earlier about the three psychologies. Because if I'm a number and sense guy, I'm forget morality. My response is, let them go. Yeah. So I get that. I get make them a state. Let, let's fix it or get rid of it, right? That, that's, that's my two options as a number and sense guy, and i got to evaluate, does fix it really, you know, make it, make it a positive for us? I don't get the sit on our laurels. Are you? I, that, that one's yeah, lost that on one's, me. That one is ridiculous because we are giving them how much a year in federal aid? 
Uh, we are currently giving them, uh, where well, I've lost uh, 23, 23.5 billion per year in federal aid. Okay. Yeah, currently. And that's with them as a commonwealth. Yeah. Making them an independent nation, we would not be responsible for that anymore. That's right. right. That's right. And so if we're talking numbers and cents, then you are absolutely right. It does not make sense removing the moral argument from it to make them a state. But what it does make sense to do, looking at the numbers and cents, is to let them go and let them be an independent nation. Yep. The one thing that does not make sense is the one thing that we keep on doing. Yep. Uh, it. it it, it, it also, uh, I agree with you. I think if you're just looking at, at numbers on a spreadsheet, you look at it and go, no, we, we can't afford this. Yeah. Uh, let me get them put another another number on there. It's got the highest homicide rate of any state. In If, if it was added, it would have a higher homicide rate than any other state in the country. Even now, D.C.? Uh, state. Any other state in the country. I just wanted to, yeah, yeah, I wanted yeah, to check. Yeah. Now, now, that having been said, there is no city in uh, there is no single city in Puerto Rico that has a higher higher homicide rate than DT, DC, Washington DC, or New Orleans. But as a territory, it has a higher higher rate than any state that does. Okay. So that number can be kind of finagled there. Okay. Yeah. They have because it there, is a very small there's place. A, there's a large crime rate. Uh, well, it's it, it's a small in area, but it's not small in people. Yeah. It, it's a, got a massive population, but. Uh, the thing is, it, it, is that because is that a reason not to add them, or is that a reason to add them because it's the economic uncertainty that drives that crime rate? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, that gets back to what I said. It's three we million. To, it's the size of Houston. We need to yeah. fix it, or let it go. Yeah, but Houston's bigger than bigger than several states. I mean, <laughs> l- 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 fine. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah. So, you know, you gotta, gotta <laughs> take that. It's the third largest city in the United States. It's 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 massive. I'm fine. Uh, uh, and it's the largest city and area in the United States. What's the second largest? Uh, New York, L.A., and then uh, Houston. See, I want to go to New York because I've been to Houston. I hate it, <coughs> but I, I'm well acquainted with I Houston. I think it's still that way. It used to be New York, L.A., and then Houston. But now I want to go to New York and see what's the difference in three and one. Like, is it, you know. A lot more people and a lot. The difference is when you go to Houston, it, Houston is just such a vast. It, it's so it's wide. It's sprawling. It's sprawling. New York is all in one place freaking area so okay. uh, it's a lot different it's tall uh, it, it is tall that's a good way Houston is short and fat and New York is very very tall and fat yeah, it's like Laurel and Hardy <laughs> yeah. only not funny um, and, and Houston floods a lot um, who says Laurel didn't flood a lot I just did said, I get the right I, one I just said Houston Houston floods a lot I'm trying I'm trying that's really hard good. I catch myself now uh, still think I'm right uh, all right so we've kind of looked <coughs> We've kind of looked at all of the uh, the facts here on, on what's going on. Um, so my question is, if it was up to you, make your argument now. I, I want to hear your argument. Uh, I'm an undecided. I, I'm an undecided congressman. Make your argument. What should we do with Puerto Rico? So am I arguing to what Congress should do? Can, can, can I a, give a more complex yeah, plan? I yeah, guess yeah. is my. So here's my thing. I think Puerto Rico has earned self determination. And that we should uh, hold a vote in Congress to hold an actual election in uh, uh, Puerto Rico on three options. Remain a territory, become a state, gain independence. Yep. And then respect whatever that is. I would give them two options. Well, but they want three. No, okay. I, would, I would give them two. Well, okay, let me I'm ask just giving you. them one. I'm just going to give them one option. The because option is the one I want. Because the option, well, and. I think all three make sense. Uh, I mean, fine. Okay, look. Fine. Uh, let, 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 but there's one option that's hurting everybody. Let's, but, let's, let's talk about that, though, then. And, and I don't think that they should be allowed to subjugate us to the option that's hurting us, too. Well, we, 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 keep, we keep coming back to this, and we haven't really done it. The arguments for statehood uh are, we've been over that. Yeah. The arguments for statehood are, are, are pretty easy. They want the benefits. You know, they, 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 they're, they're paying the taxes. They're, they're, they're in the military. And they've been colonized for over 100, 125 years now. Mm-hmm. We need to, to respect that. Mm-hmm. The arguments for... Uh, <laughs> I like how that ended up. <laughs> Mike flipping everybody off here. The arguments for... Uh, uh, flipping off the U.S. For, for independence. Yeah. Arguments for independence are also pretty strong. Look... 
we're a different religion, we're a different different uh, language, we're a different culture, we've been abused by these people, we should have the right to self-determination. Mm -hmm. But the arguments, that third argument there for, uh, for, for remaining what you are is, look, we have our own identity, we want to keep our own identity uh, because we are something different, but we also want the power and protection of the most powerful nation in the world. And the fact is that they, they have that. If, if Puerto Rico were attacked, we, we make no mistake about it, we would have no problem at all sending in the military to defend it. Well, yeah. So, so let me respond really quickly to, to your argument of they shouldn't be able to subjugate us. I don't think we're actually subjugated to their, their welfare. I don't, we're not required to include them in those programs. That's something we do. I mean, I guess and that's a fair if, point. If, if they choose to remain a territory, they don't want full statehood. Congress can easily vote to withdraw those things from Puerto Rico without any real fuss. I mean, yeah, th Fine, th there'll be point. an asshole thing to do. It, but, yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it would at this point. Yeah. But I don't know if it would if we gave them the option and they were like, no, we don't. We don't well, want then it. I think you need to give them the option to say, look, and if you choose to stay a commonwealth, we're going to retract these things. Well, I don't think it needs to be. I don't think we need to complicate the bill I'm talking about with that. But I wouldn't mind if certain congressmen said, hey. If the vote goes this way, I plan on trying to do this. Or even a whole party. And that's saying, fine. I'm just saying that um, I think if they chose to remain a commonwealth, and then we went and said, well, fuck you guys. You decided to stay a commonwealth, and we're going to take away all of this aid, any protection, whatever. Uh, we're going to take it away and just generally kind of say, fuck you. you. You get to be a commonwealth. You get our military but, protection. Um, yeah. Nothing else. And, and I think that's kind of a fucked up thing to do. So I think we would need to make it known ahead of time yep. that that stuff is, is at risk. So you, you'd vote statehood, though? Uh, not necessarily. No? I think no. it's up to them. Yeah. If you're the congressman and the vote, the vote is made, now Congress has to pass, pass a joint resolution. They have voted, they have voted through – they just did it. They voted through referendum – that they want to be a state. Now you're the congressman that's going to got to make a vote. So you're you're saying with a referendum that already happened yeah, yeah. that Puerto Rico happened. said we want to be a state, and now it's up to Congress to decide. I think at this point I would. I mean I would do it rather reluctantly, not having gotten the other side. I mean truly gotten the other yeah. side. Uh, but I think at this point the the vote comes on the floor. I I would have to, and and I I would say that because while I don't know that that's the best thing for them through their eyes. I think it's a better thing for them. And if we want to talk about independence, we'll talk about that later. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I would, with the information that I have today, I would vote for statehood. Yeah, uh, I'm with you. I, I, I have. I would also lean heavily on the uh, uh, word of their speaking only representative yeah. on, on yeah. what they want, you know? Yeah. I, I, and then I, uh, take them out for a drink after their first vote. But don't buy them. Don't get them this pumpkin stuff. Get them a no, definitely not a scotch. Probably the thing we're going to be drinking later. Yeah, a scotch. Um, <laughs> a quad. I'd take them for a tangerine quad. Scotch. All right. So who wants Puerto yeah. Ricans to drink scotch? Why not rum or you know? Rum may be the right one yeah. with them. It's good yeah. sugar drink. They get huh? plenty of rum. Shut up. Why give them what they already Shh, have? Women, hush. I swear right. I will stab you. In your, <laughs> I will stab you in the neck and in the thigh, <coughs> and you will be dead in moments. What's sad is she's not being sarcastic. She will really stab me. That's not true. I've never stabbed you before. Yet the arguments flipped. So <laughs> <laughs> I will not stab you in the neck. I will not stab you in the thigh. I will just angrily express my frustration with your. I, I will tell you that dumbassery. Uh, that I would. Um, I would vote. I would. I have long been a supporter for for uh, statehood for Puerto Rico since I was a Marine. Anyway, uh, I go back to my buddy Hector Kiley that I went to the Marine Corps with, and uh, uh, you know he was a he was a Puerto Rican guy. That was, was he Captain Hook? <laughs> no, he was not. Uh, he was a, uh, uh, but he was one of the most patriotic men I ever knew that that, that 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 loved this country more than anybody. And constantly, he he reminded us constantly that 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 Puerto Rico was colonized. And I think. Uh, I think he's right. I think I think we have colonized that. I think we were late getting into the game, and uh, you know we we grabbed what we could. We grabbed uh, the Marshall Islands. We grabbed Guam. Uh, we grabbed Hawaii. Uh, I I do think that that I would vote for for statehood. I also think that we would need to have a legitimate. And, and John brought this up earlier, and I think Anna did too. Uh, we need to have a legitimate vote of of the people. Do you oh, yeah. really want to do this? And I, the way I say legitimate is because it doesn't need to be like when we took Hawaii. 
when the U.S. added Hawaii, we shipped a bunch of Marines and sailors in, and we let them vote in the election. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the Marines guarded the, the ballot box and stood outside the ballot box picking their teeth with their bayonets so when the Hawaiians showed up, they couldn't vote against it. Yeah. We don't need that. Well, we of course need, not. We need a legitimate vote, and if they want to be part of the United States, damn it, they've earned it. They have, they have, they have served in the military. They've, they've, they've been part of this. They've paid taxes, not federal income taxes, but they've paid plenty of taxes to the U.S. Yeah. They have earned that right. Um, and suffered at the whims of, of you know, and 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 honestly, anyways. honestly, Puerto Rico to me makes more sense as a state than Hawaii does. So it's uh, a fuck lot closer. It, it it is. It really is. Uh, now they speak a different language. Uh, most Hawaiians do speak English as their native language. Now. Let me ask you this: You're 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 a Marine. Yep. You you have uh, allegiances to your country, and you've yep. sw- sworn to uphold the Constitution. A rebel faction actually starts to gain, gain traction in Puerto Rico and starts uh, a, a violent revolution to expel the military. Maybe not successful, but th- they actually do it. Who do you find yourself empathizing with? The, the U.S. As your, as your country? Yeah. Or the group that's been shit on by your country? I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 would, like, I would like to say that I would, I, I would sympathize with the... Uh, uh, you know the the independence fighters that that were there. Uh, I think that's the right thing to do. I don't know that I would. Okay. So something that I wasn't able to find a whole lot of information on, and I'm not trying to drag this episode out. I think it'll be pretty short. Was um how active has the Puerto Rican represent representation been? They are incredibly active, uh, and they Is, always have been. Always they, have been. They, okay. they, they lobby very hard. They speak before. You can turn on C-SPAN any given time in the middle of the night, and you're probably going to see her on, on, on there. She's okay. on there all the time, begging for. Uh, I knew I'd for seen her a few times. I didn't uh, know if, it's, it's if, if that was. It's a he now. It's, it's been a she for years. Okay. I was going to say I've, I've seen a guy. I don't, I don't know uh, the about the well, she. It's, well, been a, it's been a she forever, yeah. but, okay. but it is a guy now. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I I've was forgotten wa- his name now. I was watching some older stuff when we were looking at this show, so that was probably that. Yeah. But um. But no, I, I know I've seen her speaking before, but I didn't know if that was like the whole history. They had been very uh, active because the thing about it is, um, while while I've talked a lot about them getting shit on and everything, a voice is a lot. A voice is great, but um, a vote vote is a lot. It's a lot. A better. vote is nice. Um, a, a voice. I, I think a voice is worth more than a vote. Absolutely. However. I think voice only is a fuck you and everybody's getting a voice and a vote. Mm-hmm. It's like yeah. sitting at the dinner yeah. table and, yeah, you're getting a steak, but yeah. there's appetizers all over the table and you're not allowed to touch them. It's yeah. still a fuck you. It's kind of like, like when mom and dad called a family meeting and everybody gets to say something, but mom and dad are going to make the decision. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. That's the way we do things. Uh, mom makes the decision. But, but, uh, yeah. but the, the, uh, the analogy... Is that wrong? No. <laughs> no, but the analogy you just made was to children, and and the thing is, they're not children. Yeah. But, but that's but they're treated like children. It, right. That, that's they are. Point. They're that's treated like minority children, and, yeah. and uh, by, not minority racial. Uh, yeah. Power like minority. Age. Yeah. 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 Power minority. Um, but yeah, that that was just my question. I I was not sure of the history of that. Yeah, so. it's it, it's interesting at least. So, uh, fuck it, stop colonizing places. Uh, yeah. And I, I everyone. Think, I, I think I think we've gotten better We're about it. We're already so although, big. But you know, did 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 you know? After the Iraq War, we 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 came through and we wrote their constitution and we put Karzai in and you know, are we doing the same thing again? You, you know, know the, the, uh, the, we're gonna the, call them something different though. Yeah, we're not. They're not part of the U.S. They're not a territory. They're, they're right. they are an independent country, but they're they're a puppet government right now. Independentish. I mean, one thing that <laughs> that Americans scoff at. Uh, well, uh, not all, not all. Many Americans scoff at. Is during the uh, uh, colonization period of England when they say the sun never set on England. Oh yeah. But if we use the same language for what they had established and what we've established now, the sun never sets on the U.S. Yeah. No. Yeah. Period. No, no. It's we have we have all over at least all over the Pacific and the Caribbean. And if you count our military bases, good oh, yeah. God. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, this has been a lot of fun. Uh, I that that's kind of what I had to cover with this, and I found it. I. I tell you, in my reading, I found it fascinating. It I, is. I know it was a little more history heavy, but uh, but it's something that I, I enjoy doing. It is. It's really cool. And it's something that I feel like a lot of people haven't taken a lot of time to consider. And, and timely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but anyway, so is there anything left to discuss? I know Mike said he's done. Are you done, John? I'm good. You're done. All right. Well, um, if you liked this show, I'd you like to talk can... about the value of group sex. 
Go ahead. I'm good now. Okay. <laughs> God damn it, Mike. So anyway. <laughs> I just uh, wanted to say group sex on the air. If you enjoy the show, you can uh, become a patron at patreon.com slash sixpackphilosophy. Um, something that we found out the other day is that uh, some people are having trouble whenever you go to teespring.com. If you search Six Pack Philosophy, sometimes it's coming up and sometimes it's not. But if you want to check out our swag, you can go to teespring.com slash stores slash six pack philosophy plural stores yes yeah. multiple stores one six pack philosophy um all spelled out <laughs> all spelled out um you can also hit us up on social media uh there you can actually search six pack philosophy and find us everywhere and we do respond what's important um, about this is buy our swag it's it's cool swag i've got new stuff up uh Soon. hopefully yeah well, by now it'll be up yeah by the time this episode goes out it'll be up just the one with me naked on the front on the shirt no you're naked on the back okay Yes. Uh, <laughs> we just scared everybody off. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, but definitely, if you want to reach out, have a show idea or something like that, hit us up. Uh, we do respond. We have a lot of fun. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in. We've had fun, and we hope you have too. Cheers. 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 It's hot. Six Pack Philosophy is supported by independent philosophers just like you. If you would like to support us, go to sixpackphilosophy.com and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.